thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. I would like to talk about the document image analysis, and I would like to see if we are able to go a bit farther, not just reading, understanding documents. I come from the Computer Vision Center. It's in Barcelona. We are working on computer vision. There are many different areas, and I would like to talk about the last one, which is contents and documents. So why documents? Because there are a huge amount of collections, historical and also modern. Even companies right now receive millions of documents every year. So talking about documents, I mean any kind of document, or even reading in real scenes, so what we have in the top left corner. So for a machine, a document, it's just an image. An image means a matrix of pixels. So what we will have to do in this case is to interpret the pixels and take the information that's behind. In this case, we have a handwritten text line, and then from this handwritten text line, I would like to have which is the text behind. And of course, this is not easy because we have many different variabilities in the shape, not only in handwritten, but also in real life. So for example, we have some examples of text, and this is the image, the different shapes, and we have to learn how to put this into the correspondence with the text, the ASCII, the, the TXT file in this case. And for doing this, we are learning, which is this mapping. And for reading, I could have a deep learning architecture, and in this, what we could do is to go from left to right, and we could start reading the image, and then as an output, we could have the different characters in the text line. So till now, it's okay, but is recognition understood as transcription enough? Can we go a bit farther? And in this case, we would like to go towards this understanding. I would like to extract the contents. I would like to know which is the purpose of the document. I would like to do this semantic recognition, name entity recognition, and start walking in this direction. And for this, we have an advantage which is that many documents have an extracture. It's not free text, it's not a novel. So can we benefit from all this? So if I ask you, can you read this document? The handwriting style is awful, I agree. This is the shape of the handwriting, but these are the pixels that the computer are seeing. But if you look at this for a while, Yes, you will be able to see what's the text behind, right? But now, can I ask the same question with this text? The shape is the same. The handwriting style is the same. But a human being decreases the accuracy to half characters correct. What's wrong here? We don't know the language. This is the key thing. When we are reading, we are understanding. So it's syntax, it's semantics, it's context, it's knowledge behind. So can we incorporate all this in machines? So we don't have to rely that much in the shape of text, in the pixels in this case. So for doing this, I would like to have some kind of semantic information incorporated into this reading machine that I have. And in this case, I could benefit from the structures that we have. I could model this kind of semantic language model, which knows that after a name, usually a surname appears, occupation, a date, an email address, a telephone. So I could know all this. And then I could use all this for reading and extracting the information of documents. And there is even another thing that's an extra thing, and this is if I have unknown words, I have never seen this name written before because this is a different document, this person is an immigrant, and then I don't have this Elena written like this in my database. But if I take this word into the context and I use the semantic language model, I could say that since it appears in this position of the sentence, it must be a female name because this is more or less what I am expecting at this point of the document. So in summary, 
with this deep neural network architecture that has the reading and also this semantic information, I could extract the information of scanned documents. I don't go from the scanned version to the TXT file, the ASCII file, and then from this I apply NLP techniques. It's not necessary. I could go, go directly from the pixels, the scanned image, to fill databases. And this is what I could do in this collection. So till now, it seems okay. It's a kind of happy ending, blah, blah, blah. But there is a minor detail. I had data and the data was labeled. So I could train all these million parameters that we were uh, listening to at the, be at the beginning of the talk. So what happens if I don't have this training data and I, I don't have this data labeled? Because in real life, we don't know what we expect. So I could have a very tiny amount of data. For example, I could have music scoring here. And I would like to learn. And since there are many um, documents, but I don't have the labels, I could try to expand the few information that I have with the ground truth for training. So I could have this possibility to generate and augment my data by expanding the one that I have. Some distortions, more or less distortions. I could also try to mimic an historical page with all the degradations. And at the end, this is the way that I can start from very few data and expand this for learning. I could also apply this to camera-based reading systems. In this case, the main problem that we have is that the perspectives and the distortions, the fine transformations. And with one image, something that I could do is to mimic the movement of a camera. And then, of course, I have all the training data available in this case, because I could generate this as much as I want. But what if I have no labeled data? Can I generate synthetically the appearance of this document? I could start with a text like this. And then I could say, let's take some type fonts that emulate handwriting. Let's generate as many as possible. Let's add some distortions. And then the good thing in here is that I have an infinite amount of documents with the labels to train. And then something that I could do is that to take this uh, deep learning architecture that has been trained on this and try to transfer all this learning to the new collection. Of course, if I have real data, it's much better. But if I don't, I still have something to start with. So what happens if I have data, but I have no more information about this data? So what if? I can extract some information from big collections. In this case, I could see I have many documents. Here we have an example of handwritten documents without any learning system, because I don't have any training data in this case to learn. So can I, in a completely unsupervised way, can I discover at least the semantic structure that's behind? Yes, of course. I could start analyzing from left to right. I could see the different paragraphs. I could see that there are repetitive words. And probably these are separating different semantic parts in my document. And how do I do this? It's a completely unsupervised way. So what I just need to do is to put all the paragraphs into one single line and then try to find which are the repetitions that are always present in each of them. This is called string alignment. And what if I have an administrative document? It's not a paragraph, it's a document. Can I detect which is the structure, the 2D layout structure of the document? Well, I could see that there, there are different blocks of text. And then I could see that there is a rule line, but that's it. And then I see that there is some kind of chaos. It's quite a mess what we have inside. But what if I treat all these as a graph? Each one of the nodes are related to all the others. Um, and then in this case, I could even have information of the differences that we have 
in the text, if it's left aligned, if it's right aligned, maybe this is a number, maybe this is a word, and then by analyzing this, I could see that there are some repetitions. These graphlets, these small substructures that appear here, and just by analyzing this, I could see that there are different regions inside no matter if there are rule lines or not. And this is something that we could discover automatically in an unsupervised way, and I could apply this to any kind of collection, no matter if I have training data or not. So, just to summarize, if we'd like to go towards the understanding of documents, I have three ingredients that, in my opinion, are very important. The first is deep learning, and the power of deep learning if we can train the system. The second is data, which kind of data we have. It's labeled, it's not. The third is, can we benefit as much as possible from context information, from the repetitive structures? And what's the next step? Can we incorporate knowledge? And that's it. Thank you very much.